Welcome back to Dan's On Fandoms, I'm Dan. Episode 5 of the final season of The Clone Wars was released on Friday, titled Gone with a Trace, and it was so nice to see our homegirl Ahsoka back in action. Ahsoka has become one of my absolute favorite characters in all of Star Wars, and I've been eagerly awaiting her return in her walkabout story arc. This episode had a different feel to it than the Bad Batch story arc episodes did, albeit a welcomed one, and that's to be expected with the focus shifting now to Ahsoka. So let's break this episode down as there's a decent amount to unpack. The opening monologue by our narrator reminds us of the betrayal that Jedi Padawan Ahsoka Tano faced by the Jedi Council in Season 5. When she was accused of treason, her master, Anakin Skywalker, believed that she was innocent and was able to discover that Ahsoka had been set up by that bastard Barriss Offee. Unable to resolve her relationship with the Jedi Order, Ahsoka made the difficult decision to walk away from her previous life. Life. The episode then opens with Ahsoka on a speeder bike on Coruscant, racing along some pipes, heading into the lower levels of the city-covered planet. As she starts to make her way further down, Ahsoka's speeder begins to malfunction with the electric system getting fried. The bike flips over and leaves Ahsoka hanging below her bike, grasping for the handlebars. After some near misses with other vehicles, she is able to get her bike upright, but it continues to smoke and then stops idling altogether. She and her bike go into a free fall while she tries to get the engine started again. She soon kicks it into gear and is able to crash land on a nearby platform. Ahsoka is then greeted by Trace Martez who, after Ahsoka starts diagnosing her busted bike, is impressed that Ahsoka seems to have a decent knowledge about the bike's engine. We find out that Trace owns the repair shop on level 1313 that Ahsoka just crashed onto which is a cool little easter egg. Level 1313 was a originally the location of two different Star Wars projects that didn't get to see the light of day. One project was going to be the first Star Wars live action TV show called Underworld and the other was going to be a video game titled Star Wars 1313 which news actually just recently dropped that Star Wars 1313 was going to feature Boba Fett very heavily. Anyway, after multiple interactions with Trace where she tells Ahsoka she'll help her but at a price, Ahsoka is quick learning how different life is for people outside of the Jedi Order. For the most part, Ahsoka had lived a somewhat privileged life in the Jedi Order, at least to some degree. Even living on the upper level of Coruscant in the Jedi Temple is a privilege that most people on Coruscant don't have, which Ahsoka finds out. Not only does Ahsoka have to deal with the hardship and pain that comes with leaving the Jedi Order, but she's now having to acclimate to life outside of the Jedi Order, which is something vastly different from what she's been accustomed to. Trace then offers Ahsoka the use of her tools but of course it'll come at a price. As the pair head into Trace's shop, Ahsoka sees that Trace has been working on a Nebula class freighter. Trace is trying to update it to be a little bit speedier and I imagine that Nebula class freighter will come into play later on in the story arc. We soon learn that Ahsoka needs a new sparker for her busted bike but Trace doesn't have any extras. Ahsoka begins to think it's a bad idea she's there and needs to leave as soon as possible. Possible. When she heads back into the shop, Trace is working on Ahsoka's bike, letting her know that she doesn't want to keep her there if she is going to be miserable and that the work is on the house. From there, we get an interaction between Ahsoka and Trace as Ahsoka divulges that she used to live on the upper levels of Coruscant. Trace believes that Ahsoka is probably better off down in the lower levels because of the Jedi and all the wars and trouble that they create. One of the things that I love about Clone Wars and have always enjoyed about the show is seeing seeing how everyday people in the Star Wars galaxy live and learning that not everyone views the Jedi in a good light. And we're getting another glimpse of that here as Trace doesn't have a very positive opinion about the Jedi. From there, Ahsoka and Trace's conversation is cut short when the gangster Pintu, Sun El, and his two cronies enter the shop looking for Trace's sister, Rafa. We learn that Rafa owes Pintu money, but she hasn't been showing up to pay. By the way, how weird do Pintu's thugs look? Anyway, after Pintu Pintu tells Trace to pay, Pintu then has his thugs attack Trace, but Ahsoka soon steps in and kicks their ass easily. 
When Trace asks Ahsoka where she learned to fight like that, she says her older brother taught her, which, all the feels guys, all the damn feels. Ahsoka and Trace then head off to find Rafa to warn her about Pintu. They find Rafa in a laundromat, very clearly looking for items that were left behind for her to steal, which is pretty damn hilarious. Trace informs Rafa Pintu came looking for the credit she owes him. Rafa lets Trace know she'll be able to pay Pintu after she finishes the big job she just got. And Ahsoka clearly sees that Rafa is trouble and can't pay her debts to others to keep the sisters out of trouble. A Twi'lek then comes into the laundromat and states that his business partner brokered a deal to have three droids built by Rafa Martez. And the Twi'lek and Rafa shake on it. From there, Trace and Ahsoka are in the laundromat's back room, working on building the three binary load lifting droids for the client, and Ahsoka reminds Trace to make sure that she puts the restraining bolts on the droids before it's powered up. Ahsoka says that most droids are fine, but some are just cross-wired, so they have to be careful, which I'm assuming are suspicions she has from years years of fighting in the Clone Wars. As they continue talking, Ahsoka powers up the droid that she's working on and it very quickly starts to attack her. She's finally able to shut it off and realizes that it's a Type 2 load lifter droid that was actually a repurposed demolition droid and it's prone to violence. They quickly realize that Trace forgot to put the restraining bolt on the droid she was working on as it soon powers up. From there, the droid goes on a tear through level 1313, cutting a path of destruction in its wake. At at one point, we see a bunch of Tukas, also known as Tuka Cats, scattering from the droid. One specific breed of Tukas was the Lothcat, who are native to the planet Lothal and were often seen in episodes of Star Wars Rebels. I got so excited when I saw those Tukas scurrying. Trace and Ahsoka eventually get a speeder that has a forklift slash clamp on it. Trace is able to clamp onto the droid, but it is super strong and it starts climbing up a wall with the forklift still attached. They let it go, but then Trace jumps onto the back of the droid to try to get to the power button on its face. The droid continues to climb and is soon at a higher level hanging off the edge of the platform. Trace is able to power off the droid which then falls backwards as it is unsteady. Ahsoka is able to catch the fall droid and Trace with the forklift, and as it tips over a platform ledge, Ahsoka hooks up a winch to pull the forklift back to safety. The droid is too heavy for the winch, however, and the droid and Trace start falling backwards again. In this emergency, Ahsoka uses the force to pull the forklift, droid, and Trace back up onto the platform safely. I love that no one in the crowd realized what Ahsoka was doing except for a little Twi'lek child that saw Ahsoka using the force and got all wide eyed and stared at her. Really great. Back in the laundromat's back room, Ahsoka is trying to convince Rafa that these droids are extremely dangerous, especially because they don't know who is going to be using them. Rafa says that it's not her problem and that a deal is a deal. Rafa and Ahsoka clearly don't trust one another. On one hand, I could see them becoming appreciative of one another and friends by the end of the story arc, but I could also see a scenario where Rafa continues to do shady stuff. I guess we'll have to wait and see. Ahsoka and Trace then head to the wharf to get some dinner, where Ahsoka asks Trace if she ever gets a say with Rafa. Trace insists that Rafa is only looking out for them, even if she doesn't always get it right. Rafa meets up with Ahsoka and Trace and tells them that she charged the Twi'lek double. She insists that someone would build them anyway, and if she didn't give them back, it would just bring them more trouble. The credits from the sale were used to pay off Rafa's debt to Pintu and get him off their back. Rafa also gives Trace some credits to buy some new tools. After overhearing their conversation, Ahsoka decides that it's for the best if she goes and finishes her speeder so she can leave as soon as possible. Trace thanks her for saving her earlier and leaves with Ahsoka to help her work on her bike, putting her arm around her as they walk away. I definitely enjoyed this episode and loved seeing my homegirl Ahsoka. I love that they aged Ahsoka just a little bit and you can clearly tell that she's still a little lost trying to figure herself out and her new place in the galaxy. I'm still loving how great the animation has looked this season and that was absolutely the case in this episode. The animation looks great. I can't wait to see where Trace, Rafa, and Ahsoka go from here. We know at some point the Pikes are going to come into the story. Ah, uh, can't wait. But what did you guys think of this episode? How do you feel about seeing Ahsoka's return to the Clone Wars? Let us know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Follow Dan's On Fandoms on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and Tumblr, all at Dan's On Fandoms. Thanks for watching, and stay nerdy.